This is the Pacific Island American Experience course. Hi, I'm Pulit. I'm from Samoa, and you're watching some of Polly's perspective. My dad is from Holland and my mom's from Samoa and uh, I was born in New Zealand with my seven brothers and sisters and uh, we migrated, I guess, we uh, went on a plane from, <laughs> <laughs> from New Zealand to Samoa and we lived there before we came to um, Utah. And the reason we came here, um, my mother has like 13 brothers and sisters and three of them lived in, over here in California, Utah. And so they said, come to America because it's land of opportunity, and that's why we're here. And I'm in natural roots. I'm half Samoan, half Samoan. My parents are from my mom's from Samoa. As far as my family remember, we've really been here since the 60s. So my mom went to high school out here. The reason I left from now is for a little church and for the genre of music that we do is uh, reggae, and um, what impact is the music um, that we play is just things, everything that happens in life around us, uh, from the time we were small growing up until what happens even around here now, you know, just, we also write songs though about the kind of uh, things that happen in the world on a world scale too. You know, I mean, it's kind of reggae. Reggae is a struggle music. It's about life struggles, you know, and the struggles of people and uh, people that are being downpressed and things like that. So that's kind of a lot of things that, that we write about. Well, first of all, I work with youth anyway. My job, I've been working 15 years with at-risk youth. I'm not a role model. Not at all, but but that's my job is trying to help the youth and so on. But when it comes to the music part, I know there's a lot of talent. Like there's a there's a lot of talent in, in Pacific Islanders. I mean, I'm not bragging about Pacific Islanders. So sorry, everybody. But Pacific Islanders have like crazy talent, like musically. If I can do it, I feel like I see a kid who's really talented. They can do it, you know. Because I'm I'm not that talented, but I can. I, I'm doing it, so you can do it. I mean, if you have it in you and you want to. You want to sing, you want to express yourself, then I try and you know help them kind of realize where their talent is and give them little tips or whatever about what to do and how they can do it and things like that. So Natural Roots, we've been helping lots of younger artists. The guys back up a lot of uh, artists around the, the you know the area around here and artists that come from other places too. So I feel like that's kind of a way that we kind of reach out, try to help a lot of the other artists. Who's, just being there to back them up and support them with their music and what they're doing. They'll do whatever, R&B, you know, we're reggae, and that's all we do, but they can play everything. We have had bad experience with, with mainstream promoters. We've had bad experience with Polynesian promoters, and we've had good ones with both. So, I don't know. It just depends on uh, the, how experienced the promoter is. Like, Roots Rocker is the best promoter for right here in, in Utah. He does the best shows. Everyone trusts him. And you have to, the promoters and the artists have to, like, have trust, you know. And, and once you've been around for, like, a few years, you just know the name of a promoter. You kind of know which ones are the good ones. And, and you just go to the ones that are good. And as far as the shows themselves, like, the real Pawnee shows, like, I guess, like, we had a, that J Books come here recently, Fiji's come here recently. I know Polynesian shows are a little different because Polynesians they really into their music. So when they're they're really into their music, so it's really they're really boisterous and happy and whatever, you know. But uh, and the other, I don't know, I, I haven't been to other really mainstream, a lot of mainstream like what's on the radio shows. I don't know what those are like because I don't I don't go to those shows so.
sure if all everybody's gonna know my answer. I listen to a lot of Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, Bunny Wheeler, uh, still Post this. I, I listen to a little George Strait every now and then. You know, <laughs> hey, gotta claim it. <laughs> I'm a big country fan, for some of you don't know. I, I, I put country and race. It's, it's, it's pretty much the same thing to me. You know, I mean, they're both. Uh, I love just like roots music. You know what I mean? And, and country music is probably the closest thing to ready for me as far as as, 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 as being similar. So. But as far as letting me influence me, that the first day I ever heard, I, I didn't start listening to reggae until I was like eighth grade, ninth grade, and it was just the message and and the reason I was listening it was just real positive. It just had a, a big influence on me. That's ever since then I, I just been listening to reggae ever since, and and, and now I finally get to perform something I really love. And, um, yeah, same with him. All reggae. I have too many artists that I listen to, but of course, you know, Bob Marley was the first one. Uh, after I moved here, I moved here, we moved here from in uh, 1978 um, from New Zealand, so I wanted to here. And I had a cousin that moved here from uh, New Zealand in 1980, and she saw like one of the last concerts Bob Marley did. I guess I was like eight years old, and she told me she had a little tape and she put it in. And I never heard reggae or anything. She played it, then that was it. That was, that was my music color. And I was only like eight, so I don't listen to very much now, other than uh, um, reggae music. It's just, to just to me, it it just it captures everything, you know, that I need. So that's really it. But I will hear a good song here and there, and you know, listen to it. And I also listen to most of everybody up here. I've heard. You know, listen to their music because, you know, being Polynesian, it's cool to, to see what everyone else is doing, you know. There's Polynesian, there's rock bands, you know, Polynesian rock bands, you know. Not everybody does reggae. Kind of that, that's probably a bit of a stereotype, too, that every, every Polynesians just do reggae and love reggae. But I think it's natural for us to like reggae. But, um, yeah, we have talented musicians in, in every genre, you know. I mean, R&B, hip-hop, everything. We drink a lot of combo. Uh, and I'm, I heard you had a discussion earlier, so we won't we ask the discussion. But yeah, we we don't have a lot of uh, we don't have a lot of alcohol drinkers or anything out of that. I mean, a lot of you know mainstream artists say like to do whatever to kind of calm themselves down or whatever. <laughs> we just drink combo back in the car <laughs> during the show. Yeah, during during yeah whenever we can. Uh, we have seven band members, uh, five of us are Polynesian, and we have a, a Balani saxophone player and a Balani guitar player. They're the only ones that read music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, that's why we're called Natural Roots. We just have to come natural or we're screwed, man. <laughs> My favorite and best moments to me are like uh, when we just make a new song. We have a warehouse out in like somewhere way out there <laughs> that we that we practice at. Everyone's been there. But like we just make a new song and then like we know it's good and then we look at each other and we just it just feels good. That's the best thing to me. Because it doesn't matter if you don't have to be famous or rich or world renowned or because we're always gonna make music. I'll be with this guy, we're gonna be an old man and we're gonna be making music, guaranteed. We're gonna be doing it too old. It's just what we do. As far as a moment, uh, I don't really have a, 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 a real moment, but the probably the only moment I wrote that I always remember is the first time I ever hit a big stage. The only reason why I was, it, it, it meant a lot to me was because you know, I mean, sometimes when you grow up, you just think about just getting on a big stage and playing, and, and, and then I just say, like, man, I'm really doing it now, you know what I mean? So, that was part of, it, it was nothing like the crowd saying your songs or or stuff, it was just knowing the fact that uh, I'm doing something that I wanted to do for a long, long time, so that was part of it. We, um, 
a lot, a few years back, uh, I was working in uh, downtown here in Salt Lake City. I was working up at East High School, actually, and I was working with uh, the Glendale community in particular, and uh, it was really heavy on my mind, you know. I never preached to the to the kids. I never tell kids, hey, man, don't go in the gang. Don't do this, don't that. I don't preach to kids like that. But I try and uh, point out, you know, what what I what I can see in them and what their possibilities are somewhere else, whether it's you know in, in academics or whether I can see that they're a good athlete. And I try to push them to that rather than just tell them, hey, don't go in the gang, don't do that. It's just I don't feel that, that that's how you do it. You know what I mean? You try and find what they are good at. And do this. so I write the, I wrote this song, it's called uh, Words of Ja and it's kinda just about it and uh it goes <clears throat> He's just a young man trying to find an identity. Doesn't matter what the zip code, my friend. It's a state of mind you're in. So he picks up a color, starts recruiting his brothers, yeah. Then one day he picks up a gun. We are mourning another lost son, saying, Now you know, these are the words of the Most High Jah. Lay all your burden on his shoulders, free out from sin, saying, now you know, these are the words of the Most High Jah, he will never leave you alone, saying, loving no end, and that's just it. <laughs>